Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. As a general rule, the longer the focal length of a lens, the more blur it'll produce in the back of a shot. And if, like me, you like a bit of the blurry stuff, you'll likely want at least one vintage 135mm lens in your kit. So, today I've put together four vintage 135mm lenses from Pentax, Minolta, Carl Zeiss Jenner and Olympus. So without further ado, let's have a look at our four beautiful blurry bokeh beasts, beginning with the Zeiss Jenner. This is a lovely lens, as I've come to expect from Zeiss Jenner glass. A maximum aperture of f3.5 might seem slow, but while it might struggle a bit in low light, that long focal length means there's plenty of blur available. And what nice blur it is! It's nothing short of beautiful, with a softness you can almost feel. Shooting close, objects lose all sense of form and merge to create a smooth wash of light and colour, focusing all the attention onto the subject. Because it's a longish lens, blur persists even at longer subject to camera distances, and there's still plenty of separation from the background. And because this is a very sharp lens, separation is enhanced still further, and images have loads of 3D pop. Shooting close, bubbles from point light sources are big, bold and beautiful, while bubbles in the deep background are smaller, but always abundant and plentiful. Bubbles are circular in the centre, becoming elliptical towards the edges, but Unfortunately for swirly bokeh fans, there's no point where they bleed into each other and produce any of the swirly stuff. Zeiss Jenner lenses tend to render colour very nicely indeed, and this one's no exception. Colours from this lens are quite beautiful, and the Zeiss Jenner pop is there in abundance. It's difficult to put my finger on exactly why these colours are quite as nice as they are. It seems to be slightly on the cool side, although not by much, and it's not a lens that makes too exaggerated an image. Instead, it has just enough pop, sparkle and saturation to make these images feel a little bit special and a little bit magical. It makes lovely black and white images too, nice and contrasty with strong blacks, whites and all shades in between. Lighter greys have a silvery quality and that gives images a filmy feel which, personally, I like very much. This lens, like many Zeiss Jenner lenses, has a special quality and a magic all its own. It's a lens with a signature look, some real character, and at around £40 for a good one, this one is well worth a look. The Minolta 135mm f2.8 is another lens lent to me by viewer Ava Vickman, so many thanks for that Ava, and of all the 135s I've ever used, this is one of the nicest. This lens is an absolute stunner. Images from this lens are beautiful, there's just no other way to put it. It's a very sharp lens, but it's not over contrasty, and it's able to resolve a lot of fine detail. One of its greatest strengths is what it does with colour. It renders colours with both a strength and a delicacy. They're not oversaturated or too vibrant, but they also have a fullness, a richness and a depth that's quite extraordinary. Its images are a bit more restrained and understated, a bit more classy than lenses that saturate more. But there's another side to its character because this lens seems to introduce colours that aren't visible to the eye. And in this shot of a sunny winter sky, we can see shades of orange in the clouds that were introduced entirely by the lens and lend a real touch of drama to the shot. 
Oh, and it makes cool sun stars too. It makes very nice black and white images as well, with strong contrast and outstanding tonal range. Blacks are strong, whites are bright, and shades of grey have a beautiful silvery quality. It has a dual character in black and white too, because according to the lighting conditions, some images are very punchy, while others are softer and more restrained. With its f2.8 aperture, blur from this lens really is quite something. Shooting close, blur is massive and soft and lovely, and form and structure just melt away. Blur in the further distance is lovely too. There's no spot where things turn harsh or nervous. With this lens, blur stays soft all the way. It has a painterly quality, and some of the blur it makes really does resemble brush strokes. Quite beautiful. Bubbles from point light sources are beautiful too. They're smooth and soft, not hard edged as is the case with many lenses, and that gives a lovely, gentle feel to an image. All in all, I think this lens creates some of the nicest blur I've seen. This is quite a magical lens, and it really is a lovely piece of kit. At around £70 or so for a good one, it's more expensive than the others in this lineup, but in my opinion, it's well worth the extra. The Pentax Takamar 135mm is another f3.5 lens, and it's a very nice piece of kit. These Pentax lenses are beautifully made, their engineering is second to none, and their optical quality is very high too. This lens can make some beautiful images. Colour rendition is very nice indeed, and it plays with colour in a way that few other lenses do. Colours are delicate without being muted, restrained without being flat. They're not oversaturated and they're actually quite natural. But nevertheless, they have a subtle pop and sparkle. Colours feel alive with real depth and vibrancy, yet at the same time they feel natural and authentic. A really unique look. The delicacy it presents in colour is there in black and white too. It's a less contrasty look with subtle blacks, whites and greys, which add up to images with something of an old school feel, a look that I like very much. It's a very sharp lens too, and if you nail the focus, it can resolve a great deal of fine detail and structure. And that sharpness, together with a longish focal length, mean that this lens will give strong subject from background separation, even at fairly long subject to camera distances. This is a really beautiful lens that makes some beautiful images. It's very well made, it makes images with a unique character, and it's readily available for around 40 to 50 pounds. If you get the chance, try one. This one's too good to miss. Finally, we're going to look at a lens that I've used many times over the years. It's the Zwico 135mm f3.5. This is a lovely lens, and the images it makes are equally lovely too. Like most vintage lenses, it's very well made, and like most Zwico lenses, it's sharp and contrasty too, and images have loads of pop. Colour rendition from this lens is really quite beautiful. Its colours are some of the nicest I've seen. They're strong and proud, and yet they do have a certain delicacy too. They're saturated, but not so saturated that they become too loud or overwhelming. They're not muted, and they have a definite presence, but that presence is smooth and understated. And colours from this lens make their impact without any shouting or fuss. It's a similar story in black and white too. Images are strong and punchy with great tonal range. 
Blacks are deep, whites are bright, and there's a touch of silver in some shades of grey, which, again, gives a filmy sort of feel, especially in strong light. Blur from this lens is nothing short of delicious. Dreamy, creamy, feathery, soft and lovely. And I haven't found any point where blur becomes harsh or nervous. It's very soft when you're shooting close. The background becomes a big field of blur in which shapes and forms disappear almost completely and only the subject remains. Point light sources in the back of a shot create big and beautiful bubbles, circular in the centre and elliptical towards the edges, although the ellipses don't merge together to create any swirl. This is a wonderful little lens, sharp, contrasty and with beautiful colour rendition, with the great advantage of being small. Good examples of this lens sell for about £40, which is really cheap for a lens of this quality. If you get the chance, try one. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So, four fantastic lenses, all of which will create some fantastic images. They'll all make some beautiful background blur, they all handle colour beautifully but differently, and they'll all make images with a unique character and identity. And at prices from around £40 to around £70, they're not particularly expensive either. So, that's it from me for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time for some more Xenography.